As darkness descends on the Malaysian rainforest, some creatures are just waking up. They move through the night almost unnoticed, creating a tranquil setting. But in the undergrowth, it's anything but tranquil. An extraordinary raid is underway. A colony of army ants is hunting. They cooperate to take down much larger prey because they've got a lot of mouths to feed, up to 50,000 individuals in one colony. The prey is overwhelmed by sheer numbers. But the ants don't eat it on the spot. They methodically cut it down into tiny pieces and bring it back to the nest to share. They are efficient killers, continually returning to feed the rest of the colony. But what these ants don't know is that they are not only feeding their own colony, thieves steal their food. It's become an evolutionary arms race. A group of German scientists are interested in the ants. In trying to shed some light on the war, they must get to know a colony's every move. Uh, we are standing in front of an army ant uh, colony. Their nest site is right here in the leaf litter. But the ants aren't alone in the leaf litter. These army ant colonies are also inhabited by a variety of parasites which go for the colony resources. The parasites will eat anything the ants bring to their nest and each one steals in a different way. The beetle. These guys are outsiders. They prowl the outskirts of the nest, waiting for their opportunity. The spider. This eight-legged thief is found inside the nest, riding directly on top of the ants. The snail the most unusual suspect of all. They may be slow, but they can be found throughout the nest, moving around undisturbed. So why do these efficient killers allow others to take their food? Dr. Witte's team think they have the answer. They've created an artificial nesting setup that provides unique insight into the war between the ants and the parasites. Like many nocturnal creatures, these ants have very poor eyesight. But their antennae provide them with a different sense. Ants can smell very well and uh, they basically live in a, in a scent world, so they communicate with different chemicals. Each army ant colony has a unique scent. It allows them to recognise each other as nestmates or as their developing offspring. And this is exactly what the parasites exploit. The ants don't attack the parasites because um, they don't recognize them as, as aliens or as intruders in the colonies. They have evolved some mechanisms to avoid recognition. Evolution has equipped the beetle with a very unsophisticated trick. The ants always recognize the beetle as an intruder, keeping it on the run. But they have developed a way to hide. On the outskirts of the ants' nest, in the graveyard. Here, the ants deposit their dead. And the beetle has learned to rub itself on the refuse, bathing in ant corpses, covering itself in ant scent. But it's not very effective. We were actually very surprised um, if after uh, chemical analysis because we found recognition cues on their surfaces, so that it seemed that they resemble the, the host ants. But um, interestingly, these are recognized and they are uh, usually also attacked. It seems the ants have evolved a defense against the beetle's trick, reducing the cost to the colony and forcing the beetle to hide. The other parasites have taken the arms race to a new level. Instead of using corpses, 
the spider uses the ants themselves. They must stay in constant contact with the ants of their colony, always rubbing themselves with fresh scent. By comparing the chemicals of their scent profiles, Dr. Witte has discovered the spider's secret. The spider shows a, a very high resemblance of the host uh, scent. They're able to smell so much like the ants that the spiders are accepted as nestmates. The snail has a very different strategy. After chemical analysis, Dr. Witter discovered the snail doesn't release any compounds the ants can detect, making it completely invisible. It seems that the snails are chemically insignificant, that they just carry almost no recognition um, uh, chemicals. With perfect stealth, the snail slowly goes about its business of stealing the ants' food. All the parasites evolve different ways of surviving in the ants' nest. But the ants have one more trick up their sleeve. When the pressure on the colony becomes too great and the food supply begins to run out, they do something drastic. And it happens every few nights. They pick up and move, looking for a new home. Everyone helps out because the young need to be carried. Following scent trails, they march. In some places, guards are placed on either side because during the migration, the colony is exposed. The migrations can be enormous. They march for hours to find a new nest where they can place their precious offspring. The parasites must somehow join the ants on the migration or be left behind to die. Not all of them will survive. For the beetle, this means following the scent trail after the ants have gone. It's a different story for the spider who walks among the migrating ants. But what about the snail? The migration is much too fast for the snail to keep up, so it uses a devious trick. When a migration is underway, they begin producing a foam. Suddenly, the snail, who was previously invisible to the ants, is now irresistible to them. They pick up the snail as if it's their own offspring and join the migration. We believe that the, the signal that the snail releases uh, contains a pheromone that is characteristic for the brood of the host ant. It's uh, duped. It, it thinks that the snail is a uh, uh, larvae. <laughs> the ants carry their own enemy all the way to their new home. It's an evolutionary arms race. Over time, one species develops an attack strategy and the other develops a counter to that attack. It continues on forever, escalating with each evolutionary manoeuvre, driven by natural selection and the struggle to survive. 